As the new year approached in 1999, the anticipation of fresh beginnings hung in the air. However, for two teenage girls in Oklahoma, this moment marked the start of an unsettling mystery. Late on the night of December 29, 1999, or round about early the next morning, best friends Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible disappeared from Ashley's home in Welsh, Oklahoma. A passerby reported a fire at the Freeman residence, and when firefighters arrived, they uncovered a grim scene. They found Ashley's parents, Danny and Kathy Freeman, shot in the back of the head. But Ashley and Loria were nowhere to be found in the rubble. Despite the search, the girls remained missing, adding a chilling mystery to the already tragic scene. Investigators were left questioning not only who took the lives of Ashley's parents, but also what happened to the two teenagers. What was supposed to be a time of celebration turned into a chilling tale. This led to the beginning of a mystery that, till date, hasn't been solved. December 29, 1999 On December 29, 1999, high school friends Loria Bible and Ashley Freeman celebrated Ashley's 16th birthday at a local pizza restaurant in Venita, Oklahoma. The girls, along with friends and Ashley's boyfriend, had a joyous evening. Originally planning to spend the night at the Freeman farm, last-minute changes led Loria to be the only friend staying over. December 30th, 1999. Sometime between midnight and 6 a.m., tragedy struck. Danny and Kathy Freeman, Ashley's parents, were shot, and their mobile home was set ablaze. The girls, Loria and Ashley, were nowhere to be found. Despite Bible's car being parked outside, searchers couldn't locate any trace of the missing teenagers. The fire was later determined to be arson. December 31st, 1999. Loreen and Jay Bible, Loria's parents, discovered the remains of Danny Freeman inside the burned mobile home. Law enforcement initially speculated that Danny had killed his wife and fled with the girls. However, when Bible's parents returned to the scene, they discovered another body shape among the rubble. On closer inspection, they found it to be Danny, also shot in the head execution style. However, no signs of Loria or Ashley were found, deepening the mystery. January 2000 Prompted by tips, searches of Grand Lake, a mine shaft near Pitcher, and a water-filled quarry near Chelsea yielded no signs of the girls. The case gained national attention, even featuring on America's Most Wanted. March 15, 2000 on March 15, 2000, Laureen Bible, Loria's mother, held a sign in front of her house, pleading for Loria's return. The community and the nation anxiously awaited answers in the baffling disappearance of Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible. January 1, 2001 One year after the disappearance of Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible, a solemn memorial service was held, marking the painful passage of time without any answers to their mysterious vanishing. June 14, 2001 Authorities, acting on information from a jailhouse informant, searched a suspect named Paul Glover's Wyandotte home. Despite removing a patch of blood-stained carpet, subsequent testing revealed it wasn't related to the missing teens. In July, searches near Twin Bridges State Park in Ottawa County yielded no success, intensifying the frustration surrounding the case. July 26, 2001 Search efforts near Twin Bridges State Park in Ottawa County continued to prove unsuccessful. Heartbroken family members such as Jay Bible, father of Loria, anxiously waited for any signs of their missing loved ones. January 24, 2003 Again, on January 24, 2003, the authorities conducted a search in Wyandotte after the discovery of bones, only to find they belonged to a horse, leading to another dead end in the investigation. Fast forward to 2010. 
In 2010, Ashley Freeman was declared legally dead by her family, a somber acknowledgement of the prolonged uncertainty surrounding her fate. 2011 to 2013. The case gained national attention through various TV features, including Vanished with Beth Holloway in 2011 and Out of the Ashes in 2013, shedding light on the enduring mystery. December 2017 to 2018. In 2017, almost 20 years after the unsettling events in Oklahoma, a breakthrough occurred. The Cray County Sheriff's Department stumbled upon a box of previously undisclosed notes and documents related to the investigation stashed away by the previous sheriff's administration. Among these findings were crucial leads, including the names of witnesses and statements that reignited the pursuit of the truth. A significant piece of evidence emerged from this cache, an insurance card found at the crime scene. The card belonged to a woman associated with Phil Welsh, a known meth dealer with a criminal record. This discovery triggered suspicions, leading investigators to Welsh and his associates, David Pennington and Ronnie Busick. Investigators pieced together a chilling narrative. Welsh, Pennington and Busick supposedly visited the Freeman home that fateful night for a drug deal, escalating into a violent confrontation, resulting in the deaths of the Freemans. After the murders, the trio abducted Ashley and Loria, taking them to Welsh's trailer where they faced unimaginable horrors. Bound, raped and eventually strangled. The criminals callously disposed of their bodies in a pit. Witnesses disclosed disturbing details, asserting that Welsh adorned his trailer with missing posters of Laurie and Ashley. He allegedly kept a collection of about a dozen Polaroid photos documenting the unspeakable torture inflicted on the young girls. These grim images were stored in a hidden leather briefcase. April 2018 Although Welsh and Pennington had already passed away, Ronnie Busick, now 66, faced justice. In April 2018, he was arrested in Wichita, charged with four counts of murder of Ashley Freeman, Loria Bible, and Ashley's parents. Despite the arrests, the families of Laurie and Ashley continued to seek closure, expressing that their pain would persist until the girl's remains were recovered. June 14, 2019 in 2019, quadruple murder suspect Ronnie Busick was offered immunity and reward money in exchange for information on the decades-old case involving the disappearance of Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible. However, Busick's attorneys claimed he couldn't recall anything about the slayings and the subsequent disappearance. July 29, 2019 Then, on July 29, 2019, Investigators and the Tulsa police dive team focused on the former residence of Warren Philip Welsh II in the abandoned town of Pitcher, where authorities believed Loria Bible and Ashley Freeman were kept during their last week alive. Welsh, along with David Pennington and Ronnie Busick, was implicated in the fatal shootings of Danny and Kathy Freeman in 1999. Ground-penetrating radar and the Tulsa Police Department's dive team were employed to conduct a thorough examination of the last known location where authorities believed the 16-year-olds were seen alive. Laureen Bible, Laurier's mother, expressed gratitude for the advanced technology, emphasizing its significance in the ongoing investigation. July 31, 2019 Despite extensive efforts, the latest search of a football field-sized mining pond in the Pitcher area failed to recover the remains of Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible. However, the authorities still remained determined to continue their efforts in the quest to find the missing girls. November 2019 A jury trial to determine Ronnie Busick's competency was scheduled for December 13, 2019. Busick facing charges related to the presumed deaths of the Freeman couple and the disappearance of their daughter Ashley and her friend Loria appeared in Craig County District Court. Authorities planned to inspect a mine shaft in the Tar Creek area of northern Ottawa County based on a witness's report. The focus was not on the search for Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible, 
but rather on determining whether a camera could be lowered into the shaft. Equipped with lights, a camera was lowered 175 feet down an old mine shaft in the Tar Creek area by members of the Tulsa dive team. The investigation aimed to shed light on the disappearance and presumed deaths of the two missing 16-year-old girls, Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible, offering a glimpse into a chapter of the tragic true crime saga. December 2019 In December 2019, during Ronnie Busick's competency hearing for the Freeman family slayings and the disappearance of Ashley and Loria, his attorney suggested he could walk away looking like a hero if he could recall the night. However, Busick claimed memory loss, leaving the judge to determine his competency. On December 18, 2019, following a thoughtful 45-minute deliberation, the jury concluded that Ronnie Busick was competent to stand trial for the killings of the Freemans and the presumed deaths of Ashley and Loria. The verdict, delivered as Busick stood emotionless in street clothes, marked the end of a two-day trial. July 16, 2020 Ronnie Dean Busick entered a guilty plea with a unique condition. His sentence hinged on his ability to lead authorities to the missing girls' bodies. This marked a significant development in the two-decade-old case. September 1, 2020 Busick received a 10-year prison sentence and five years of probation for his involvement in the disappearance and presumed deaths of Loria Bible and Ashley Freeman. The sentence considered time served since his arrest in April 2018. October 2020 October 1st, an investigator revealed details provided by Busick, stating that Warren Philip Welsh II and David Pennington were the masterminds behind the tragic events in 1999. The revelation added complexity to the case. From the Craig County Jail, Busick asserted his innocence in a phone interview, stating, The most misunderstood part of this is, I didn't have anything to do with it, and I am the one doing time. April 26, 2021 Based on information from relatives of a deceased suspect, authorities initiated a search in Pitcher, focusing on finding an abandoned root cellar. The location was deemed a promising lead in the quest for Loria and Ashley's remains. Multiple searches occurred in Pitcher, digging into lots and properties connected to Dave Pennington, Phil Welsh and Ronnie Busick. The search team, hoping to recover the remains, planned to return after re-interviewing former neighbors and property owners. However, nothing came up. Other suspects in the ten years following the mysterious disappearance of Loria Bible and Ashley Freeman, two convicted killers, Tommy Lynn Sells and Jeremy Jones, separately confessed to murdering the girls, only to later recant their admissions. Jones claimed he had killed the Freemans over a drug debt and took the girls to Kansas, where he allegedly shot them and discarded their bodies in an abandoned mine. However, searches of the identified mine yielded no results, and Jones admitted to fabricating the story for better prison privileges. In a 2001 profile on Unsolved Mysteries, rumors circulated that the Craig County Police Department had a feud with the Freemans due to the death of their son, Shane, who was shot by a deputy after stealing a car. Although Shane's death was ruled justifiable, the Freemans had considered filing a wrongful death lawsuit. Danny Freeman's brother Dwayne claimed that Danny had confided in him about deputies attempting to intimidate him, adding a layer of suspicion and intrigue to the already perplexing case. Similar to numerous unsolved mysteries, this case too had its share of theories. Theory 1 Some think that when the fire consumed the Freeman home and Kathy's lifeless body was discovered with a gunshot wound, the initial assumption was that Danny Freeman, her husband, had killed her and fled with the two girls, Ashley and Loria. However, confusion arose as all the cars remained parked with keys in the ignitions, raising doubts about this theory. The morning after the fire, when Loria's parents arrived at the crime scene, Jay Bible, Loria's father, found the lifeless body of Danny Freeman. 
This turn of events left investigators back at square one. There were no signs of a break-in or kidnapping, prompting questions about the motive and the disappearance of the two teenage girls. Theory 2 Early speculations considered the possibility that Ashley and Loria might have killed Ashley's parents and fled. Reports suggested tension between Ashley and her father, but their stellar academic records and involvement in school activities contradicted this theory. Both were known for their achievements, with Ashley excelling in basketball and the National Honor Society, and Loria contributing to the cheerleading team. Theory 3 Some theorized that Danny Freeman might have been involved in drug dealings, leading to a bad deal and ultimately his and Kathy's death. However, this theory failed to explain the disappearance of Ashley and Loria. Theory 4 Then there was this theory of Jeremy B. Jones, a death row inmate who confessed to killing Kathy and Danny Freeman. His story unfolded with claims of a favor for a friend over a drug deal, followed by taking the girls to Kansas, shooting them, and discarding their bodies in an abandoned mine. Authorities rushed to the alleged crime scene in Kansas, only to find no evidence or clues. Jones later retracted his confession, revealing that he fabricated the story to gain better prison privileges. Following Jones's conflicting statements, the case returned to a state of uncertainty. All these different theories and suspects created chaos, and investigators struggled to understand what really happened to Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible. This left the community and authorities without the answers they really wanted. The mystery of their disappearance continued, and nobody could figure it out. This leaves us thinking, what most likely happened. Drawing upon the available information, the most logical explanation revolves around the involvement of Phil Welsh, David Pennington and Ronnie Busick. The timeline suggests that Welsh, known for his criminal activities, and his associates visited the Freeman home on that December night for a drug deal gone wrong. The confrontation resulted in the tragic deaths of Ashley's parents, Danny and Kathy Freeman. Subsequently, the trio kidnapped Ashley and Loria, subjecting them to horrifying experiences before ultimately taking their lives. Phil Welsh's association with an insurance card found at the crime scene strengthens the likelihood of his involvement. The rediscovered cache of notes and documents, including witness statements, adds weight to the theory that these three men orchestrated the gruesome events. Witnesses' accounts of Welsh's trailer adorned with missing posters of the girls, along with the disturbing photographs he allegedly possessed, further implicate them. While theories involving other suspects and motives surfaced, they lack the coherence and supporting evidence found in the Welsh-Pennington-Busick case. There's a good possibility that the drug deal turned violent, resulting in the deaths of the Freemans and the abduction of Ashley and Loria and so the absence of concrete evidence tying other suspects to the crime scene diminishes their credibility. In the aftermath, the Oklahoma Department of Corrections labeled Busick a Level 4 prisoner due to his respectful behavior and compliance with prison rules. With a positive record, he earned 60 credits per month, equivalent to two days' credit for each served day. Despite a 10-year sentence, his good behavior led to an early release on May 19, 2023, after serving only 38 months. This decision was based on the system's reward for good conduct. So, it could be that Busick faced the consequences for what he did. But then again, that's just the best guess we can make from the information we have. What do you think happened to the teenagers? Was Busick the real culprit, or could there be unseen threads connecting other individuals to the crime? Leave your comments below. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.